You know, Andreas, I love commercial real estate. There's so many different types of products, asset classes, whether SFR, multifamily, mixed use. Uh, but the thing that a lot of developers and uh, people who buy these types of asset classes underestimate is potential risk on new developments and projects. I mean, what are your thoughts on this? Uh, just with everything else, our job as lawyers is to be issue spotters, right? So a good lawyer, you should go to them and identify what the issues are, specifically the ones that they don't know about. So to your point, it's what they don't know that they should be excited to hear about because we're trying to avoid problems in the future. Um, and there's endless amount, depends on the type of use that it's going to involve. Um, have they done this before? Do they have any experience? Are they going, or is there going to be any commercial space downstairs on the ground floor, but you know, residential on, on the upper floors? Um, so there's a lot of inquiry that goes into it, and the more questions we ask, the better. And you know, to that point, I, I do see some of our return clients who are doing different projects, sometimes success, successive ones, ones or, or, or a couple at the same time. And what they like to do, and what we oftentimes tell them not to do, is use the same staff, whether in the management context, whether in a janitorial context, super context, for different locations. Um, again, commercial real estate and labor, there's so much overlap yeah. that so many attorneys miss. But what are some of the things that you look out for in that context? So that's a perfect example. Um, you know, from the business side of it, you're thinking about scale, right? I already have this building and I have this super and I have this bookkeeper. And I have an entity that owns the property and I have another entity that manages the property. They're all owned by me. Now I buy the building next door and I logically would use the same super who is not maximizing their time and now they're the super for that building as well. It's almost like an economies of scale type of argument, yes. right? So from the business side of it, that makes perfect sense. From the legal side of it, you have a joint employer scenario. This super, and, and that's a whole nother area of law that a lot of uh, companies, uh, building owners are getting sued for, that super now works under the Fair Labor Standards Act in New York labor law for both employers. What that means is when they sue one company, they say all of these people are really one and the same. They're all owned by the same company. They're managed by the same company. And these are just alter egos for other purposes. But for my purpose, I just know Andreas as the owner of these companies. It doesn't matter if they have 50 companies or just one, they're all joint employers. So in that scenario, that's fine if you have a joint employer scenario, except all the more reason why you should be thinking about Am I paying the super properly? Because Correct. once I enter into building number two, my exposure just doubled. Correct, and it's all about siloing risk in these types of transactions, and in any transaction for that matter. And that's something that competent corporate and commercial real estate counsel needs to work hand in hand with labor counsel um, to make sure that they don't inherit any of the past risk and liabilities from the, uh, from the seller, but also so they're not shooting themselves in the foot trying to build this empire and then it can go down in a snap. And strategically, you can also use that time, that moment in time where you're buying this neighbor building, this adjacent property, as a way to explain to your super, hey, before I get financing, the bank is requiring that all loose ends are tied up. Let's go through how you've been getting paid. Let's clean up the records and sign here that you've, you know, you've been paid properly. Moving forward, this is how we're going to do it. So it creates this moment in time that doesn't look like you're trying to correct something, but more so enter into something new the right way. And it's not necessarily you that's requiring it. It may be a bank that's requiring it. And look, in the perfect case uh, scenario, you do things before they go wrong, right? But that doesn't always happen that way. We have many clients that come to us and they say, listen, I already bought these properties. I have a super who's at multiple properties. I may or may not be paying him or her right. What can I do now? And it comes down to what? Processes, procedures, and compliance, right? Handbooks, things of that nature. Um, and I just think that's something that attorneys like us, we need to work together and issue spot, as you said, just to put in our clients in the best position to succeed. And, and you know, we, we're employ employment defense lawyers, which means, you know, we represent the employer, the owner, the property owner, the, the restaurant owner. But uh, actually compliance is your, is your friend. It could be a competitive advantage. And it's also a way to mitigate the chances that your employee is going to sue you. So if they see organization systems, processes, procedures, if they see you're giving notices, that you're giving updated notices, that you care about those things, they're less likely to think that you have a gap in your compliance and then go to a lawyer. 
Uh, it may be completely wrong, but in the end, those are the kinds of things that'll make employees feel like they're working for a legitimate company, even if you're making mistakes that you don't know of. Doesn't mean you shouldn't fix them though. Absolutely. So. To find out more information about these types of transactions, feel free to go to our website at kilegal.com. Thanks.